Welcome back to Nifty 50 Photographers. Right, in today's video, I'm going to talk about using the Sony A7R5 for street photography. I've got on my uh, Sony 90mm f2.8 macro lens, which uh, is pretty good for street photography. I wanted really today to concentrate on people um, because I want to test this um, very much talked about autofocus tracking system. And those of you who've seen some of my early videos about the A7R5, if you haven't, check out my uh, first impressions video, which I'll leave a link to up here somewhere. I haven't done much with people photography, and that's really what the auto tracking is really good at. It's good at recognizing subjects. So I'm going to particularly be focused on trying to catch some people. So today we're in Kendall. Kendall is a quite a historic market town. It dates, dates back to uh, uh, about the 1100s or so, some of the architecture here, magnificent parish church, which I can just show you over here. Now, one of the other great things it has, it has a number of yards. We'll probably go and try and explore some of those. Uh, they're great for doing like frame within a frame shot. Just gonna have a walk around, see uh, what catches my eye and uh, test out this tracking system, see how good it is. For my first scene, I've just found this um, footbridge over the river. It's got some railings, and I'm going to just test if the tracking can pick up a subject through the railings. I think that's quite a tough test for it. So, uh, get that set up and see how it goes. So, there's a person coming over now, and I just touch the screen on the subject to let them get a bit closer. It's managed to do it. It's really impressive. Wow. So this is one of the uh, famous yards that actually I love the sort of little structure on the back of the house there. That, uh, with the steps leading up to it. So it's a lovely composition. Shame it's slightly spoiled by the wheelie bins. But I'm going to test and see if the tracking picks somebody up walking by because I like to frame them in that arch. And we're going to do that in a portrait mode. So. What I need is just somebody to walk by. And there you have an image and it's managed to latch on to the subject just perfectly. So there's a guy up here with patches on his jacket now. What a focus system. It's supposed to be able to follow people from behind. So let's give that a little try. I need to speed up a bit and catch him up. But again, it seems to recognize people from behind extremely well. So let's see how it tracks something that's a bit faster moving. Down a push bike here. I'm going to see what uh, we can do with that. Now this time it hasn't worked quite as well. When I checked back, the focus point was actually here on his face, which is where I would hope it would be. However, the sharpest bit of the photograph seems to be the bit in the foreground. I'm not sure if that's because I've got a slow shutter speed. Oh, it's about a 60th because I wanted to create some motion in the shot and give a feeling of, uh, of movement. And maybe his head's moving around more than things like his uh, arms, which are fixed on the, the, on the handlebars. So it has tracked the subject. I'm just a bit disappointed that his head is not in focus. I'm not sure if that's my fault or that's the camera's fault. So I'm just changing the target of uh, the subject is going to recognize the animal and bird because there's a few pigeons floating around and uh, let's see how well it works with them. Maybe we can get this over oh, this little doggy's going to behave himself. Let's wait for the pigeons to arrive. Out of interest wanted to see how well it tracked to something like glass with reflections and so on and you can see I take a picture here of ladies enjoying the coffee and it's had no trouble picking them up at all. So let me talk very briefly about my camera settings. So generally I've been shooting wide open around f2.8 at an ISO about 400 because I wanted to uh, get quite a fast shutter speed because of the moving people. It's actually quite a dark cloudy day in fact it's just started raining which is why I'm sheltering under a bit of a balcony here. Now for uh, some of the other shots have actually opened up the aperture to about f4.5 and slowed it down 
particularly for things like the moving cyclist, just to try and get some uh, motion into the background. But uh, this 90mm macro lens is great. If you want to see a review of that, I'll leave a link to that video up here. So, there you have it. It's only a 7 r 5 and it's autofocus tracking. I have to say, I didn't try every single subject that you have a choice of, but the ones I chose for people, animals and birds, it really was pretty faultless. Definitely a vast improvement over anything I've seen on Sony cameras before. So, from my point of view, the hype is uh, actually spot on. I was really impressed with how it picked up some very difficult subjects, particularly when there was other things in the way, like fixed objects, like railings and so on. Now, if you're wondering what to watch next, into street photography, I'll leave a link to a video up here somewhere that uh, gives you my five tips on getting started with street photography. Street photography, I find, is one of those tricky subjects, but once you get into it, it's quite easy to get passionate about it, and it's a lot of fun. Anyway, main thing is, go out and have some fun with the camera, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.